Hey everybody, I am Suzanne Barrett Justice, and if you're here because you want to see a YouTube video on painting an interesting landscape, then you came to the right place. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I basically will do painting sketches. Now, painting sketch is a it's a not quite as rendered painting. And it helps me conceptualize what I want to do, perhaps maybe for a bigger painting down the road. So I am going to take you along on this little journey on doing a little Southwestern vibe type of painting on uh, something I saw on one of my trips. And I'm gonna show you what, how my brain works, which can be a pretty scary thing. But it's gonna let you see how I can knock out a piece. Again, it's a sketch in a very short period of time and conceptualize my overall painting. So sit back and watch and we'll go on that little journey. So thanks for joining me today. If you are one of my subscribers, thank you so much. I appreciate you so, so very much. And if you're not, you know what to do. Go ahead and subscribe. See the little owl down there. Just go ahead and ring that bell and it will notify you when the next video comes out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in to this little landscape. All right, so here's our setup today. I'm just working, since this is simply going to be a sketch. Now, this is not going to be a completely rendered piece, but I'm trying to get an idea of what I, you know, sometimes I have to have concepts in my mind for what a piece is going to be. So in this video, that's just basically, this is not going to be a completely rendered piece, just merely a sketch. But with a sketch, I get a lot of things worked out in my mind. So here's our palette today. We've got the titanium white, burnt umber, these are both Winsor Newton paints. This color is called Light Red, and it is by uh, Winsor Newton. I also have um, Terra, it's Tuscan Earth. This is Tuscan Earth, and that's by Sennelier. I have Cadmium Red. I have Permanent, oh no, this is Winsor Orange, also Winsor Newton. I have uh, Purple Lake, Winsor Newton. I have Sennelier's Natural Tint, which I love this color. It's great for tinting or for sh creating tones. It's a very nice color. Uh, I have Ivory Black. I have Cobalt Blue. I have Ultramarine Blue. I have Sap Green. And um, of the uh, this is the Shiva series of C Citron by, um, oh goodness. Oh goodness, it's sugar green. I use it all the time and I can't think it's it's escaping me. But I'll I'll go ahead and get started. It's this is very much like a cadmium green, except it doesn't have cadmium in it, but it's a very nice green. And I like to have the burnt umbers for my greens as well as kind of um, earthing earthing up some of my other colors. These are good colors to have. So here's our lineup. And like I said, this is going to be a sketch. So what I'm gonna be doing is getting down my dark values and keeping it super light and super super loose because I'm concentrating mainly on composition and contrast and just trying to get an idea so let's go ahead and jump into this one All right. so here we have our substrate it's simply something just called cat you know it's canvas paper it's by Strathmore happens to be uh, like a 9 by 12 maybe uh, not very big. It's a 9 by 12 sheet, and I'm probably not going to even paint the whole thing. Again, remember, this is a sketch, not a completely rendered piece, and this is sometimes how I get concepts for a painting that I want to do. So this particular reference that I'm using happens to be uh, Red Rock and uh, in um, some place in Arizona. It's beautiful, and uh, it's just something I've had for a while, and I've, it's been floating around in my mind. And uh, so here, I am going to uh, start out by just putting in the dark values. And you know that's pretty much how I start all my pieces, right? Is by using dark values. So, what we're doing here, oh goodness. It didn't. So, I'm, you know, I will have the reference up for you to see. So you can see a side by side a little bit on this. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the, um, Purple Lake and do a really loose sketch of what I think, um, how I want this to go. So I'm looking and I want to make sure that I have enough sky. I'm just trying to keep it, um, and I'm being very loose with this because I just, you know, I have to make sure I get my structures down and, and, um, 
I just want to, you know, kind of suggest where things are going to be. I'm using a number two rosemary filbert. This is ivory filbert. And I am just kind of putting this little sketch down, just kind of getting that high, whole idea of what, what this is going to be. So that surface here. Just a sketch. I'm keeping it very loose. Using mainly paint that are right here. And uh, it's the whole foreground of this. You know what? I get excited about color. Color is something that I love. And oftentimes for me to, to, to pick a subject um, is often. It's as, as much about color as anything else in a piece for me. Um, I have to make sure everything lines up here. So if this is my big flat surface here, kind of a little plateau. I actually need to move this over. And th this is one of the things, you know, I don't really um, do a lot of uh, preliminary drawing onto a canvas. Some people do, and that's great. Um, I just don't. And. Uh, This is also concepts. That's me trying to just get a concept of what I want to do here. And I'm going to switch to this color here. This is my um, earth color. I have a little bit of white in it, just because I need to. I know I'm, I'm cooling my. Everything's cooling down a little bit here. And I'm going to use a little bit of the natural tint. It just kind of takes it down to a nice tone here. Yeah. I know I have this ground here. There's a foreground here. And uh, again, I am not, I'm going to switch to a larger brush. I'm going with the long filbert rosemary eclipse right here. And uh, it's a little bit earthier, a little bit redder. I grab a little bit of the cad a little white in it. You can see how runny it is. I'm just keeping this super, 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 super loose. It's almost the pink colors. I don't know. It's kind of cool. And I know that's hard to see, but I'm just running the same color right down to the bottom. There's lots of trees and things here. I'll, I'll get those in. But I'm just kind of keeping it loose, and I'm just suggesting that there's this ground, this area. And often when I'm starting out a piece like this, I have my eyes sort of closed. So I'm going to suggest where some of the trees are going. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this umber. I'm mixing a little umber into sap green. And I'm going to grab a little of the blue too. Again, very loose. I'm not putting in a lot of, um, a lot of paint here yet. going. And I may leave out some of the other trees because again it's 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 conceptual and um, I'm suggesting that there's going to be trees over here. And there's a lot of Mixing a little bit more blue in with my color here, a little bit of white, maybe too much. Put some of this color, remember values tend to be lighter in the background. And there's just some kind of And I told you I wasn't going to run it to the end, but I can't help it. I just did. <laughs> I just ran it to the end. But remember, I'm not worrying about this too much. This is a sketch. There's going to be quite a bit of foreground here. Just kind of suggesting that there's something here. And I'll end up moving that a little bit for you later. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, 
put some of the blues in in the, in the sky and I may change up my clouds I eh, you know I I'm kind of loose with my references this is this is just for me to have fun with to loosen up if, as a matter of fact so I am not really going to worry so much about uh, did I get the cloud exactly where it used to be no that's not what this piece is about so I'm just going to suggest I'm going in with a color mixed with cobalt blue and uh, it's cobalt blue, a little bit of white. I'm just kind of getting it in here, suggesting where it's going. It's cobalt blue, white, and a little bit of the um, ultramarine blue. Now you can use your clouds to direct your eye further and I'm kind of going off the off the grid here and not really using my reference to put my clouds in because I'm wanting to lead the eye and I want to keep the blue right up against that uh, cadmium red of the mountain so here let's go ahead and start playing with cadmium red now I love this color this is so much fun for me to use and you know I have the purple lake um, kind of sketched in values in there and you can see I'm just kind of following the, <laughs> the lay of the stone, so to speak. So you'll see even my brush strokes tend to be more, you know, as I'm going through, almost horizontal in some places. And I'm using the Purple Lake to create more of the cracks and, you know, the darker, cool values that you might see in that, in that mountain. And, you know, even the top of the range is a little bit... A little bit cool up there but this is fun because this is how I'm creating the structure I'm so far basically only using the purple lake and the cadmium red so uh, you know I, I kind of have to lay down the groundwork and and you know if you're watching my videos before that I use a lot of layering so even though this is really a sketch uh, it is helping me to just you know for my mind to be able to work through uh, the actual structure of the mountain and laying in all these um, different colors and temperature of paint. see there's lots of striations up here and I'm just gonna play those neat colors and uh, leave it kind of lumpy you know it's it's rocks right so it can it can have that lumpy lumpiness using that little bit of that edge to my filbert here it's a pretty small filbert Oh, can you hear those birds? Oh, they're bickering about something out there. Yeah, I'm easily distracted. Oh, bird! Squirrel! And I, I'm being conscious of, I guess, where the light's falling. Now, I, like I said, this was photograph is taken probably close to sunset and so it's directly in front of us so basically we are the sun <laughs> in this picture 
um, um, being conscious of where I have my dark values, leaving them, leaving that, um, the CAD un undisturbed, the CAD red, but I'm just putting in the CAD yellow mixture. So it's lightening it up, but it's still keeping it hot. So instead of putting the white in there, I don't want the white. I just want it to be a little bit lighter in value. It's still just as hot. Of course, CADs do are an opaque color. So they offer those, what I'm asking it to do. I mean, they'll, they'll lighten and brighten it right up without cooling the temperature down. Because there's very little temperature difference I want here. Again, remember I said there's the striation of rock. I'm gonna use a little bit of oil just to let this kind of flow a little bit better. I can go a little bit more impasto if I want to. Now this, this light value that I've made with the, it's not everywhere. So don't think you, have, you can put it everywhere. It's kind of like makeup, a little goes a long way. So I'm taking advantage of the dark edge and running it right up to that dark edge. Let's see if I can show you a little bit better. So, oops, there we go. So I'm using, so if this is my dark value over here, I'm running that lighter value right up to it. And it creates that, now it looks very, a lot more cavernous, if you will. Like you can, you get the sensation that this is rock, you know, that it's not just and we're going to put the dark value, and I can run that down to here. Okay, so there's, again, I talk about the striation, and I will put some striation in here a little bit better, but right now I'm just, I'm just playing a little bit creating the stone shapes. I'm going back in with just CAD. Okay, now you know what? I'm gonna make, I'm gonna come over here with my CAD, and make a little bit of a, a shade with it. I'm gonna take it back down so you can, sh oops. So you can see what I'm talking about. So over here, I took a little CAD, mixing a little bit of ivory black. Now, why did I do that? Because even though I have this um, purple lake in here, and purple lake is an awesome color, I see it. I see areas that is, it's it's um, darker value, but not necessarily cooler. And so I don't want to just cool everything down. Trying to create that look. So there's some stuff going on here. And there's little craggies, like little craggy edges and stuff, but I'm not gonna get two nuts in there. I'm gonna make it a little bit redder. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm attracted often to, to a piece by its color. Remember I said I was gonna have to add some little windows in here. I'm going to lighten them up just a little bit. Trying not to mix it with the green. So I'm just popping it in there. able to do more of that when we get the trees in here but like in this area so this area of the rock it is hmm, it's red but it's not as bright so I'm just see now that's that is a shade of the cadmium red and right in front of it there's another one So I didn't really necessarily want it cooler, I just wanted it darker. And 
and I see some other little little humps. Remember, I'm just making little humps here. And again, some striations down here. Um, this little this little area here also has that. And there's another one here. Just. rocks seriously they look like they're on fire and it's just what's so fascinating like now I do want this to be a little bit lighter I want to be able to show it off but I don't want it as bright as this hey folks you getting the feel are you getting the feel so again, we're leaving a lot of the dark values. Going back in with that CAD shade that I made. So when I want this to stand out, I need this to be bright, but I don't want what's directly behind it to be as bright. But I don't necessarily want it very cool. I did put the, the, the purple lake in here. And, um, and that's my cool value, but I'm also making the Had shade. It's all in here. It's going to be that CAD shade. And we know what that means, right? CAD shade means it's cadmium plus ivory black. Okay. Is it starting to make sense here? Put that on here. Maybe you do need to see the paint a little bit more. Now, cleaning off my brush, going back in with my CAD yellow light and um, cadmium red. Just put a little bit of this yellow. Now, I do have this cad yellow, but I don't need it to be quite that yellow. <laughs> so, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the Sennelier. Nope, that's not working. Hang on. Let's see if I can take the Sennelier. Nope, it's not doing it for me. There we go. It's just enough on the end of the brush to make the color I want. <clears throat> Excuse me. I obviously have a frog in my throat. Okay. And we're just going straight across, making these little lumps. Okay. Now, there is these unusual striations, and it's just the way, you know, the, the rock formations over the years. And I'm just gonna suggest some of these striations up here. And I'm using kind of the CAD yellow white mixture. What's interesting is these striations are consistent. Obviously they go in a horizontal manner across the stone. And uh, So that goes right across, even across this, and it's even if it's a little bit, you know, goes up here, goes up, and it goes up here. The striations are consistent. I just, I don't want that. Put a little bit of light value here, more of this lighter rock color here and a little bit here okay we're 
I'm not going to get to, I have to keep reminding myself not to get nuts here. And there's a little bit of a lighter body there. Again, that striation falls this way too. Okay, so in here, going back to this color that we made here. Lighten it up just a tiny bit because it's almost too dark. That might be too light. See, it's the, I'm playing both sides here. bit better. Okay. Now I know there's some greens and stuff in here that will follow in, but maybe for now I'll be like leave that alone. It's, it's like I can't get these to stand out enough because they're they do stand out. They're predominant. I might have to add more of the dark value. Let's try what, see that what happens there. I'm just gonna go ahead and take that shade. Oops, I'm making it wrong. I'm making it with purple lakes. Sorry. Need to sometimes I get confused with my palette, and that's another reason to try to be consistent with your palette as to where you place your colors. Because if you forget and you put something else in a different spot, you'll be using the wrong color, and that's what I just did. So I did just make a CAD. Um, A CAD shade, another CAD shade, so I can emphasize this rock area here. And the woodpecker tells me it's 11 o'clock. Some people have cuckoo clocks. I, <laughs> I have all kinds of birds that tell me what time it is. And there's this, this rock here. And again, I'm just popping in a little color, not really about detail, but you still want to have the, you know, you want those values in there. You got to have that. You got to have that. If you're not doing detail, you got to have, at least have that. Now, I'm going to start popping in some of the color here to make it make sense in, the, in this area. Now, it's kind of really rough, right? But I'm going to start making the other colors. Now, it's the same kind of face as this part, so it's gonna have that brightness too. So I'm cleaning off my brush, adding <clears throat> my Cad Yellow Light to my Cadmium Red Medium. And just start putting in some color here. And I can see it's hitting it at the tops, but it's gonna have some of these warmer colors too, so, or cooler colors. I'm just kind of hitting it a little bit so I can discern my value, my uh, planes, if you will. So I know this is behind it and it's, but this stands out more. Does that make sense? I'll get back to it. Just like before, we have a lot of striation that happens here. I am going to take this color and make
make some of the shapes. This is the um, one of the other shades. What are you doing, Sam? Now, obviously, when we start getting into more of the um, foreground, I will add maybe a little bit more detail. I mean, you know, even sketch is going to a little bit, right? So as you get lower, there's less light hitting the top of the mountain. So it gets a little bit uh, more muted, I guess, if you will. So you can see where I'm going in down below here. And it's a little bit softer color here. I'll still go back in and put some uh, darker values back in, but for now, I think they need to be more organized. And here I am telling you not to put detail in, but even for me, I have to have that. It still needs to make sense to me. Okay, so there is that deeper red, which is actually just the CAD, one of the CAD shades. Grab it a little bit more, making a little bit more over here. It looks like I might be able to get out, get by without putting more cadmium down on my palette. You know, this, these colors over here are also nifty to use too. That makes a nice color. So that is the light red by Winsor Newton, mixed with a little bit of the cadmium. It makes it just a little bit earthier. Okay, so I've got to go back and work on some of these shadows. So I'm taking the Purple Lake again because they are shadows, so I do want it to be slightly cooler and kind of working that a little. that, um, singer, do you have to go out? I think I'll have to walk my dog soon. Um, it makes it so I don't have to grow a garden when everybody else does it. <laughs> All right, I want to emphasize some of my lighter values. I'm gonna go back in and pull them out a little bit more. And, 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 and here's where artistic, um, um, or artistic license comes into play. Anytime I do this, I usually like to darken a value. I don't like to have my values too close together in this case. And I am, I, there's all kinds of branches and stuff in here and I want to do it so bad, but I have to have to switch brushes. Got stuff. Okay, I'm gonna use the 1 8 inch ivory dagger. I've already got it loaded. And I'm going to do some little fine, uh, I'm gonna add some oil too because I need it to roll smoothly. And here we go. I'm gonna do some just little branches and stuff that might be Still not really doing what I want it to do. There we go. And I'm just kind of suggesting where this, I don't know, just kind of brush, dried out brush. 
And again, doing the layering helps create that look of um, space and depth. And so we're gonna got back from a walk with my dog and so both of us are a little hot so sometimes you gotta walk your dog I'm curious how many of my subs and, and watchers of these such videos are also big dog people I love my dog I can't imagine not having a dog so I still have some quite wet paint here so it's making um I'm trying not to to muddy it up and blend too much now I'm not using straight white if you can see over here it's actually a light light blue bluish gray that I'm putting down here it all in. And we're about to wrap this one up. There's going to be a lot of stuff on the ground. I'm going to put some more lateral growth. stuff over here some light green spiky things so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of white titanium white mixing it in with this green over here and it's like a hmm I don't know what you call it but it looks pretty formable let's mix a little bit more green in that put a little bit of a grayer color up here. We've got some stuff going on in here. Just layering you know, a little bit of the detail. I'm just putting a little bit of detail in, but not a lot. I don't know. That's not the right color. There we go. He's painting. I don't know if you guys can hear him. And it's not very hot here. It is humid, as they say. It's not so much the heat, it's the humidity. <sighs> okay, I'm going to look around and start doing some of the other little detail-y things that need to go into the video. And again, I'm not going crazy with detail. Trust me. I'm really not but it looks like it has detail in it I may just do a couple little branches in here too
gonna stop at that one just for a minute. I'm gonna see if there's any black branches that I need to add. Since I've got this handy dandy brush out. Using a little bit of oil helps it roll a little bit better. And I think the little details like this make it seem a lot more interesting. I'm gonna put a little bit of a browner. Let's get a little bit of this color here. more sticks in front of this. Yeah. And I'm going to probably, remember how we had that neat dark color under here? I'm going to extend it out here a little bit more because I've created some more Sing. Is it taking it taking a little while to cool off? Is it taking a while for my boy to cool off? emphasizing some of the dark values here a little bit more. I'll go ahead and put some little bit of light ones in where we think we can put them in there. We've already had my mom visit, and I've got some other students coming, but I feel confident that this piece is gonna get knocked out. Now again, as I said earlier, this is a sketch, not a completely rendered piece, but I'm very satisfied with what it looks like at this point, and you know, sometimes these type of pieces are actually more popular. You know, I didn't bring the blue all the way up to the top, and I may. I'm gonna put some of these little gray stick things that I see in the foreground. Okay, and I'll show you the, uh, try to remember to show you the uh, reference a little bit more often. I don't know, we'll see, you know, at some point you decide when you're done. And 
I'm kind of see if I need to revisit some of these other areas, put a little couple more dark values in where I think they need to be. Um, there's like shadows underneath some of these rocks and things and little twigs and. And again, when we talk about how you're leading the eye, I may actually lighten up some of the middle of this path just a little bit. I'm pretty good about that. I'm gonna go ahead and give it some little tops to these rocks. I'm gonna just put a little bit of a, just a slightly yellowed top to some of these rocks. lighten up this little bit of the area right here in the center as if it's a well-worn path. Let's be careful because I don't want it to get green. I think that's about as much as I'm going to do today, folks. Not bad for sketch. Some young ladies outside, I think they want to come in and maybe talk a minute. <laughs> Go ahead, you can. That's okay. Come on, then. He sounds good. He sounds good. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm good. 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 Actually, this is actually, I'm doing, I'm recording a video for YouTube, so you have to be sure to, you can catch it because it'll actually have us talking to be able to say, hey. Look how good that is. Oh my gosh. This, I like to paint, but I cannot paint that good. Well, I've been doing it a long time. So this, this piece I started this morning. He sounds mean. He's really not mean. Singer, stop. Not a completely rendered piece it was very uh, quickly completed and again I concentrated mainly on the contrast and temperature of my colors so I'm able to get a realistic uh, looking piece so here you have it uh, this was a super fun piece to do I hope you enjoyed watching today's video and if you did give me a thumbs up and we'll see you now here's our finished piece and, and you can see that this is not really high, as highly detailed as what you may be used to seeing in some of my works. But what this one is about is mainly about contrast and color shifts, okay? So obviously I was very attracted to the color on this particular reference. And so you can see that there's a whole lot of orange and a whole lot of blue. And you know, that gets me all crazy. I love playing with complementary colors. And again, it's also about contrast. So you can see the intense shadows here and you can see the intense shadows up here in the actual uh, mountain and and as far as the compositional aspect I have your eye being led and it kind of goes right up this way and it's just kind of you know so there is no mistake about how everything's laid out here and I'm actually pretty pleased with how this turned out and I'll show you here I'm going to pull this over to the side like this and show you the reference that I used and you kind of get an idea where I was going. Obviously the clouds are a little different 
And again, remember, this is simply a reference and this is simply a sketch. And I call this a sketch because I don't consider this a um, completely rendered piece. It's actually on the canvas paper, which is something I usually don't paint on unless I'm doing sketches. So there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comment section. I'll be getting to you right away. I'm pretty fast like that. And uh, if you have any uh, suggestions about something you'd like to see, go ahead and leave that in the comment section as well. And if you're my subscribers, I appreciate you. And if you're not, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the, hit the little owl, you know what to do. And uh, we'll take care of that little matter. And if you like more uh, detailed, real-time videos and want to learn a little bit more, go ahead and check out my Patreon page. So again, from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to thank you for joining me and uh, I'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.